I couldn't find that for some time. I became part of a group that created one. Oh, really? Yes. So you created a church? Yes. So you have a church right now? <laughs> when you say created a church, it sounds funny. But because the, the, the typical word would have been, you got called, right? Oh, okay. But quite frankly, <laughs> in, in the way that my, life, my mind works, I wasn't trying to get called. Okay. I just wasn't going to church and I had a couple of friends who were not going to and we thought, let's have coffee and conversation. So we meet on, the, just what we're doing, mm. we meet on a Sunday morning, worship and talk about stuff, what your issues were, and it kept growing. I'm always on the, I'm on the faithful <laughs> side, I don't even look that area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me but, expose you on but, the but, you know, What I want to know is that, as a married man, how do you stay like, focused in this place? This city is crazy. Mm. <laughs> Well, I, I think again, um, fidelity is a personal choice. The personal choice. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. We're back, we're back, we're back. I moved back. <laughs> so we have you in the studio. Amazing guests right now. All right, but we'll dive into that soon. But I want to tell you guys, listen, keep tuning in. I moved back. It's very important. And S... It's what we're saying, though. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a, long, a while. while for people, right? You know, the elections kind of made us reset a bit, but we're yeah. back and we're better. Shout out to shout out to the big sponsors in the building, though. Yeah. We've got, you know what I mean? Gold Money. Yeah, Gold Money is like, listen, say, I'm we back. Yeah. We want to see you guys grow. Just slap a bit of a <laughs> situation. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. And, and Ferdinand, yep, yep, talk yep, to yep, me, yep, man. Yep, yep, how's, how's, how's life? Um, cool, cool. Good, good to be here. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, last time we spoke about it during the election, you were like, this is going to happen. And I'm glad. That we have, we're doing. Yeah, 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 and and you know what? It, it's it's been it's been a while since we've been back on the on the screens of people. People have been missing us, yes. so you need to tell so this them. This is really have, just got back. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, you know, really got back. <laughs> so where have we been? Where have we been? What's been going on? Because you got to. You know, I mean, people are asking questions. Yeah, well, I mean, we've been hustling. <laughs> Deals have been, been getting signed. Lagos has lie. been legacy. Yeah, it's been it's been legacy in a good way for once. Mm. You know, it's always extremely good or extremely bad. <laughs> <laughs> With Lagos, they're, so they're, they're it's both been, extremes. It's both extremes, right? Mm. So this one's been more positive. I think the last couple of months has been positive yeah. for me. Uh, what about you? I'm good. You know, I, I you know I moved again. I moved to another place again, nice. so I'm, I'm settling into <laughs> Lagos properly mm-hmm. now. Well, third move in two years. Yeah, guys, listen in Lagos. Yeah, you just if, when you first move here, just keep moving houses because you're never going <laughs> to find the first place that you're going to be here for a while. <laughs> because to find the right place is going to take a while. Because after a while, you realize, oh, so there's better places than this. Oh, okay, okay, I'll move. I'll move around. So always keep it temporary. But yeah, I moved. Um, getting more settled a little bit now. Business is getting better as, mm-hmm. as usual, which is good. And yeah, just yeah. feeling the environment. Got the got the circle right now. Honestly, meeting good people. Like mm. like our man over yeah. here. You know, I'm, I'm I'm very blessed to have a superstar in the studio. No, 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 no. I, he I, is a superstar. Let, let me. Let me so we were having a chat earlier, man. Like, no, no, we were having a chat, and, and I just saw some of the stuff that he's doing, and I actually wanted him to talk a, a little about that, but like. To, to open a studio in Nigeria, I mean, just probably just want to, might want to introduce yourself, but to okay. open a studio in Nigeria and create stuff that you do, how, how is it like? How is it? Oh, so if I have to drop my name again, Freddy, Freddy Ademefe, I'm the CEO of Magic Couple Studios, which is one of the things I'm very passionate about. But I, um, I, I love stories. I, I think that the biggest export that can come from Africa are stories. Um, our stories have been largely unexplored. And when you look at the world, um, from the uh, the Nok era to uh, the uh, the Greek mythology, everyone has done everything with their stories. And so I think that was what led us, uh, myself and my co-founders, we were sitting and just playing around. Okay, yeah, we love animation, but what about creating films? And the first thing we thought about was, okay, you read a book in school, which was it that stood out for you? And Passport and Madame Ilya kept coming up, mm. right? So we went all the way to <laughs> Ibadan to get the, the rights, went to the publishing firm, it was all dark. The man was like, so what are you guys up to? We said, we're doing movies. <laughs> the publisher was like, okay, cartoon, said, something close. <laughs> and he was like, ah, you guys, are you sure there's money in this thing? He said, we hope there is, there is, there is. And of course, that was how we got the, the rights and we started producing, there were a lot of challenges, mm. a lot of challenges. First of all, we realized there were not enough animators. Right, because no university offers animation in school. Mm. Um, so if you have to, you have to then create your own pipeline. So we went to Yaba Tech. We got to the talking to the dean at the time. We said, okay, please, we want to 
you to give us some students. We wanted to even set up an animation faculty there. Oh, wow. <laughs> we we're quite naive. And you guys said <laughs> it would take us about five years to introduce a curriculum. So you have to go through NUC, Nigeria University Commission. It wouldn't mm. be done at the school level. And, and so they gave us about 10 people. That was how we started. We started adding to that, training more people. But it's fun because um, today we've grown. We have over 50 people in the studio across 2D, 3D cutouts, the story team, the social media team, the digital team, and everyone is just pulling in their, their weights to see that we, we do what we need to do. Mm. Um, and I personally feel like we have an opportunity to do what um, people like Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks have done for their countries because they will say things like, if you, uh, if you want to change the world, tell a story. Mm. Um, and, and I think someone had said at some point that Walt Disney was the most dangerous man in the world. Someone who can play with the imagination of people is dangerous wow. because you can make them believe um, possibilities, right? So storytellers are like prophets. They have to embody a future for which they haven't even been into but can see it. And it's like you're carrying people with you. Hmm. No, it, it's interesting. Like, give us an example of, of a story that you've you've covered. Okay, one of the um, projects we're working on, I just mentioned Passport of Madame Ilya, which is a novel um, that was used across West Africa. We're currently working on something else uh, called Legends of Bulan, right? And now, Bulan is the name of Africa before Africa was called Africa. Oh, wow. So it was Bulan. actually called yeah. Akebulan, Akebulan, which yeah. is the mother of mankind. Mm. It was about the fact that Africa started from there. Mm. So um, there were lots of, the first university in the world was actually in Africa. Right. Was it, was it the one in? Let me get, let me get right. Is it in, in Egypt or? It's Cairo. No, it Cairo. wasn't even. It wasn't even Egypt. It wasn't even Mali. There was. I think there was just another country Zaria. that they discovered. No, no, no. I'm um, still um, around the Libya area, Tunisia, one of those okay. places. Wow. But the interesting thing there are too many stories that haven't been explored. Now, for instance, the father of medicine. Um, it's called um, um, Hippocrates, right? Mm -hmm. if, so if you're a medical doctor, you take the oath. Mm. But if you go back in time, the real father exactly. of medicine is um, a guy from Egypt called uh, Hinotep. Yes. Right? And he was a polymath who invented the pyramids. He did mm. the first design of the pyramids, right? Now, how come we have all of these great characters, great heroes, and no one is seeing them being made into a film? Mm. Um, and what we're doing with Legends of Bulan, we're going back in time, and the interesting aspect, again, because it's creative non-fiction, is an Afro-fantasy. Because the, most of these heroes didn't all live in the same time and place. So how do you bring Chaka Zulu, Queen Amina? How do you bring uh, Shango? How do you get Masa Musa from Mali? Who was said to have bankrupted um, Egypt when he passed through? Mm -hmm. He gave everybody from there um, a, um, a coin or gold, and everybody became rich, right? So you, you find all these heroic characters. So in, in this particular series, Legends of Bulan, they're coming back, we're imagining them in, into a, a, a timeline that can allow for their characters to be seen, their peculiarities to be felt, yeah, yeah, yeah. but right within the context of um, the, 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 the African that was never colonized. Oh, wow. Mm. So you're kind of bringing the original African stories and bringing, into, bringing animation yes, out yes, of it. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes, such yes, an yes. interesting and way. And what, what is propelling us is what if Africa was never colonized? Because mm. the map of Africa that we have today was one that was crafted in 1885 at the Berlin Conference, and there was no African on the table. So Africa as a country has not been a place where people are waking to their power. They call us the sleeping giant, but a significant part of the resources of the world is located here. The interesting aspect, again, if you look at the birth population, Africa is like the, the next place where they can supply skill mm -hmm. to the world. Mm -hmm. In Europe, Europe is pretty much, their median age is maybe somewhere around 45. It's mostly aging population. Yeah. Our median age here in Nigeria is 18.6. And yeah. across Africa, it will float between 18 to 25. Mm. So we're an incredibly young country, young continent. And so I think we, are, we need to do much with that number. Let me just dive into a little bit about kind of the, your process of animation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, how did you guys kind of go ahead? What inspired you? How did you kind of put it together? Did you learn online? Did you kind of go to like animation school? Like how, how did that happen? So um, the first set of animators we, uh, was almost all self-taught because you don't have it in school. So um, it was a lot of learning. I mean, we learned for about three years. Just people just kept learning, getting better. We're not actually making money at the time. We're learning, mm. right? Um, and I, I'm not too sure why we did that, right? I'm not mm. sure why we did that because it wasn't an informed decision. We just realized that we loved to practice with it. Mm. We're doing a lot of things. Now, our quality is very, very international. Mm. But I think, again, animation, you require patient, patient talent, mm. not just patient capital, patient talent, people that can stay the course, Right, but in a country that is primed with survival, mm. people would rather hustle than build. 
right? And it takes away from the energy of what you're building. So we, but the interesting aspect is that most studios are either 2D traditional, which is what you find with Lion King, the first Lion King, mm. or you have 3D, like what you have in Pixar. Interesting, we are both. Okay. Now, you cannot be both. And the reason was because when we started as a traditional studio, people would apply that they wanted to work with us or train with us, and they were 3D inclined. Mm. But we didn't have any 3D studio around. So we thought, okay, okay, come to work, come to work. Let's see what we can do with that. And that was how the 3D started to build um, and scaled up as well. Then I figured, okay, every time you want to create stories, you have to look for people who could write for you. Why don't we create an in-house story team? Mm. So that for us, story is not something we do when we need. It's something we keep doing every day. Mm. So um, we're growing our IPU library to about 50 and we're looking, this year, we're doing a second generation story because we're working on a series called Meet the Igres, which is like a family. Oh, when you think no. of, um, you think of the blackish, but yeah. animated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we have people like Chigel and Oke Bakasi who play the lead role. So thumbs up, they did a great job with that, right? We're oh. looking forward to it. So we're dropping that series. Hopefully it comes out on platforms like Netflix before the end of the year. Amen. So that's yeah. that's one of our major drop. Um, and Passport of my Ilya, the 2D traditional is coming out next year. There is an album component to it, and it's it's very exciting because if you think of think of um, the Prince of Egypt, it's very Western. Mm-hmm. This was 18th century, um, 19th century Kano. Kano was at the time literally a, a local world power. Mm. The Kano walls were very fortified before the Berlin Wall or the China Wall was the Kano Wall. And at this time, there was a civilization that was very sophisticated. Right, so we want to be able to show this part of the 19th century kind of. The North is the least explored part of storytelling because somehow, really, yeah, it's not in the so. art form though. Because I'll give you an example, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe just me, but I, I normally like buying arts, and when I go to all this art market and stuff, I see a lot of like mm-hmm. northern art, arts about the sultans and all the, the warriors about the north. So, like, I see a lot of stuff about that in the art mm-hmm. form. But maybe not in a storytelling yeah, form. In, the, in Nollywood, you, Nollywood is heavily dominated by the southern part of Africa, Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. So it's, an, it's a Lagos thing or maybe Asaba or Enugu. Mm. Right? They have Candlewood or something like that. But again, the penetration across the country is very limited, right? But I do think that when it comes to music, when it comes to culture, the Asa language, the Asa people, they have something very unique, mm. right? And for us, we want to tell African stories from an authentic lens. Um, be able to share that part of us. We even went to, we spent about the month in Kano, mm. um, went through the train and went to their libraries, did a bit of sociology, understand the culture, even their tie and die. We had to actually... Oh, yeah, that's, and die, we, yeah, that's quite a It huge was influence, actually yeah. a big industry at the time. So the styles we used in the art form was actually inspired by that research, mm. right? So it's history for us, right? Um, but this movie is a travel log because it also took place in Cameroon and even Saudi Arabia when he goes all the way to Mecca. So it's sort of like a, th- a travel log and you get to see snapshots of these other places. But every story, I think for us, we also love to play around the conscious stories, stories of consciousness. Mm. The idea again is that... That story was about a one, one man's search for himself. So yes, it's a love story and you find him moment by moment, but it was an inward journey to reclaiming parts of himself, right? Through things that he has lost to love, lost to war. How do you come at the end of the road? And maybe we are all oriented towards looking for essence, meaning, purpose, a map of meaning is external. So mm-hmm. typically you always feel like, I need the next goal, I need the next goal. So we pursue the, the we always pursue the means um, and the ends, but the idea is learning to come home to self. I mean, when you come home to self, when you don't necessarily need to hustle because you want to seek approval, when you're not hustling because you want to feel socially accepted, right? How do we come to a place where what we're doing is powered by our a sense of abundance and a sense of um, that we already actualized, not that we are trying to get actualized, because that which we're pursuing will keep changing, right? Mm. Society, it's what it is. So it's really about one man's search for self. Legends of Bulan, on the other hand, is really creating this epic world where, once again, we can remind ourselves what the world could possibly be without all the fracture of the wars, mm. right? Today, wars have become a, um, a common place in the world. People are fighting ethnicity, bigotry, tribalism. But could we come call ourselves away from the division? What about if we're more united mm. yeah. than we're separated? What about if we're more alike than we're all alike? But we believe that we're enemies, we're opposed to each other. Right. So why did you choose to do this in through animation and not with real life people? Um, I have a real life project that I'm working on, but okay. animation for me is because it travels farther. Really? Animation, yeah, it's, it's it travels farther. Animation is considered an international export. Well, like anime, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There, there yeah. Is, is a big deal. In fact, 
animation makes way more money than live action. No way. <laughs> yeah, in it's fact, they, 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 they yeah. actually said that they're, they're, up until recently, no animation movie has ever made a loss. What? Yeah, animation. So the way it works, Nigeria here, we have a misconception, so we think it's for children. Mm. But do you know, you can actually do a billion dollars in China. Because animation. Asia, it's a huge animation consumption. Yeah, yeah. Consumption, consumption. They watch it for exploration and discovery, not because they they want you to make their money. They were like, mm. "Wow, this thing is new town, looks different, right?" right? Mm. Yeah. So it, it, it you look at Lion King. They always do one point two billion dollars. Why did they do Lion King? Same story after twenty five years. Why are they going back to Mulan mm. after after twenty five years? If they're going back to endless repackaging because there is no end to the, to the demand of the human soul when it comes to animation. Animation is powerful. Wow. It, we, this is a place where man gets to play the god. Yeah. We get to create our own world. You know, the, the animation that I saw on your, um, I went on YouTube, right? Yeah. And I think the SIP, it's called SIP, something like that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, SIP. So where, the demographics from that, where are they mostly from? Yeah, yeah. look at the stats. Yeah, where okay. are they from? Well, uh, for SIP, SIP was uh, a, a studio experiment. You know, we have a lot of young people who are today dependent on energy, energy drink, on, on coffee. Um, we're all battling timelines, deadlines, right? And our mental health gets compromised. Mm. So it was actually a, a short film we did um, in commemoration of the Mental Health Day to help okay. every young creative to re, re, you know, have moments to pause and think mm. and um, don't just live your life on a treadmill. Um, take a break from time to time. Um, get to let your mind be still. Hmm. I need to so. listen to that more. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, I'm also a creative who has my own share of energy. I always want things to keep me going, right? Hmm. Um, because sometimes I enjoy what I do. I'm not depleted by them. I'm actually refreshed exactly. by them. But there are moments when I, I, I just don't want to stop. Mm. Right. Yeah, I yeah. can't just close the laptop. I, I just yeah. don't want to stop. I right. So, but I, we need to have a conversation about conscious companies. So, what I try to do is design my companies for this for for the flourishing of the human soul, not just for the optimization of profits. So, how do we create our companies to be healthy places? And yeah. how can we have conversations where people can actually? I can spot a colleague who needs a downtime, who needs to just take a day off. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so that they don't necessarily. Most of them are passionate artists. They will not stop. Most of and don't let them be the victim of yeah. their passion because we all are. Mm. Right? They're already a victim of their love for what they do. Yeah, so we great. then have to be look after each other because at the end of the day, uh, when we spend our health, when the wealth comes, there isn't much to enjoy. So you need both, <laughs> really, in it, a sense. It's great. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you a story. Someone, someone that I was talking to a while ago, she was like, she was like, ah, look, this, this entrepreneurship journey that you're trying to go on is a very difficult path. Like, are you sure you want to really kind of go ahead on this, right? But sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you're just not really seeing the external effects of how affecting your life. And mm. you, have some, you need someone by you to say, you know what, look, you're moving towards this area. Like, you need to take care of yourself and watch. To, to like, how would you explain that your, your kind of the journey that you've gone through to set up your studio and all the work you're doing now? How do you think it has kind of affected other things around you? Mm -hmm. and, and how are you dealing with that? It's been a balancing act. And quite frankly, some some seasons are terrible. Mm. Um, some are better than others. Right? Mm. So I'm, I'm married and I have young kids. And I would love to be more involved. I mean, I try. But, you know, the kind of life we live and the kind of city Lagos is you don't have the luxury to just want to take a whole day and stay with them. But I'm learning to cultivate relationship when I have an opportunity to. So mm. if I'm home weekends, I want to be with them, right? Um, so balancing marriage, work, and all of those things, quite frankly, uh, my idea of work-life balance is evolving. At some point, I used to try and assume a 50-50 type of role. I used to think, okay, I have a passion here, passion here. But I take work home. And it's not because I... I I want to take work home. I have clients and partners who are just waking up on other parts of the world. Mm. <laughs> right? So, yeah, at different time times. Yeah, at yeah, different yeah, times. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a global yeah. company, so I'm not just yeah. dealing yeah. to it. In fact, 80% of my clients are not in Nigeria. Wow. You understand? But I choose to be here because I love it here and I believe in the prospect. And I think that the, um, for what I'm, I feel a sense of calling to do, Nigeria provides the perfect backdrop. I have access to other creative people, the resources that I need. But so, you know, I'm going home, I have meetings sometimes. So now I'm trying to regulate, mm. but I'm sometimes I'm also, I want to get things done. So if you're, for every young person or every young family man who is building, entrepreneurship can become consuming. Um, and that's part of why I would always um, advise that you have to intentionally make out time 
for your spouse, I'll recommend. Hmm. It's not something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so it's, it's, like, <laughs> yeah, that, it's, it's something I'm working at. Okay, you're working at. You're <laughs> like expert. Say, at, yes. Someone said something that um, have a date night with your spouse weekly, mm. have a staycation monthly. Hmm. Um, and have a one week away every quarter. But how do you even get a spouse? You know, how you? How oh, do you... well, that's a journey. Yeah, I, I, well, he yes. needs that advice. Yeah, I need that advice. Yeah, but... so... <laughs> <laughs> how do you even? <laughs> no, well, that's 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 quite an interesting one. Um, what I would say it's um, if you're someone who you're looking forward to. Um, things are a lot more complicated now than, <laughs> than when yeah. than five years ago. But I would say um, I always place some um, emphasis on values, on interest, mm. um, because I am um, I have a very short attention span. So the way you can keep me rooted is to share my interest. Mm. And I always wanted somebody that I would share in their interest. Mm. Um, and there was a way that we could. So even when we are together, we are, our moments are not. We, we are not running out of what to do. Um, and then having the same type of values, the same ideas of life. Mm. If I'm, I want to, I, I believe I'm Nigeria is something I want to work to build. And the person you're trying to date sees herself in Canada. Yeah. You need to understand that, <laughs> yeah, right? No you guys, check by you. Yeah, me, <laughs> you guys yeah. have to have a conversation, yeah. right? So yeah. I think somehow it's really about first of all building friendship and let the friendship be a point where you collect data, process the data, and see the alignments. The like point yeah. where so don't just yeah, I don't. Why would you collect data in the relationship? <laughs> no, 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 I like that. Like it's a sitting down yeah. with someone and having a conversation okay uh, how was your growing up like and all of this mm. thing. because one of the things that I think is impacting the quality of relationships we have is trauma yes. a lot of us mm. raised up Preach. in a typical Nigerian home we're not yeah. well adjusted at all yeah. yeah because the point was that these were were raised by parents who knew how to provide but not always how to be present mm -hmm. so Make there might be a relationship about that I want to see <laughs> yes, one, one, see. one, 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 one <laughs> bring the, the money bring the money bring the, no, bring the money <laughs> He said, "Bring the money." <laughs> no, before they cancel you, bro. Like this is child violence. <laughs> we but they, we've been cancelled coming, right? So our parents cancelled us. A lot of us. I mean, they, 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 again, they, they, they had no. And honestly, let me not take it away from them. A, a, lot, a lot of our parents were re really very hardworking people. Um, they were very committed to our success, sometimes even more than you were. <laughs> and I think in a sense, most of them did the best they knew with what they had, right? So they, they gave us what they felt was parenting, right? But um, even if they had to put pressure, because most parents were living vicariously through our, to their kids. Mm. So go to med school because you will be successful and I'll be happy. I'll be called the mother, a, a doctor of a mother. <laughs> go to the law school, be successful. And then I know that I can have a lawyer in the house. So we were all being distributed in that sense. So that's yeah. the way you, you were raising that. You know, so, and then a lot of people, if you if you if you go to school and you're not the smartest in the room, you're very unlikely to have your parents very disappointed in you, right? Because our parents will compare you with your cousins or your sibling who is doing worse or better. Mm. And so there was all that ideas of um, you were raised to draw meaning from outside. It was like you you were you were you, you were less. Well, Chinese friend, and yeah. Indians the same. Sometimes Indians are even worse. No, Indians are, are Indians. Worse. Indians have this script too. Oh, and, and so you meet them when you meet some of these people in, in the in corporate world. They are still yearning for meaning. So you are dating someone mm. who whose father was emotionally absent. She's going to have a relational longing need. But as a, as a father now, though, do you feel like you're a little bit different to where you kind of were? brought up in terms of how you train your children. I, I'm making an effort too. And the reason again is I think the conversation is as important as your presence. Okay. Um, yeah, and being able to fill them with understanding, help them cultivate a sense of self-awareness. Um, they beat it out of us. <laughs> you know, you were not that aware. Of who uh, most, you are, Quite yeah. frankly, I, I wouldn't like most Nigerian men, even all to their 20s, self-awareness is a luxury. You know, it's very, very, like, I they're not as self-aware, you understand? Mm. And they, they, most of them are not processed from the, and they were raised that way, mm. right? So they, they were not raised to be in touch with our feelings, to be in touch with our thoughts. You, you were raised to give an answer because as a first son in a particular family, you're meant to become this guy, right? So you would feel, you grew disconnected from your essence. You, you, most people are living disconnected lives. They are just successful at work, mm. but failure at being themselves. The worst part of self-betrayal ever plays out in that type of scenario where you're not true to yourself, you're not authentic with your voice, you don't even know whether you have a voice. You're just coasting through trends. There's a call in here that tech is making money, I'm going into tech. Yeah. And you yeah. meet tech and tech is no longer working. You're <laughs> thinking, okay, let me take a step back. Everyone is japarin. I need yeah. to leave this country and you're in Canada and you're thinking, okay, what am I doing here? How did I get here? But the point is that the trends determine not your internal rudder. So there is, you're not living from inside out. You're just leaving a pattern. You're Some leaving. Some of us are too extreme on the other end though. Boy. Some of us are just absolute rebels. <laughs>
Yeah. Everybody is going that way. We're going going that way. way. Somebody <laughs> say that rebellion is the first step towards authenticity. Yeah, you're very you have to sort of like you have to first of all like re- 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 repel yourself. Like I don't want this system, resist it, yeah, and, and then, then you now start to dive deep yourself, to find yeah. yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's an important conversation, right? Because if you're dating someone who is not self-aware, who is not in tune with their feelings, who also have not sent have a centered way of being secured in the who they are. Mm. All those insecurities will come out, yeah. right? It will, it will, it will push through. And it will push through. And, and, and that's a very good point. And I think for me specifically, right, I, I want to be on, uh, know that, listen, in Nigeria specifically, that there's a lot of badly raised ethics that we have. Mm. And how do we actually now start, like, removing those things? I don't know if you... If on you learning. Sugar daddy learning. culture. And, but it's one of the things... <laughs> <laughs> Transactional thing. Alright, oh, 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 try to Lagos for that way. <laughs> but so, so like, and and I want to see if you can bring that in, in the in the kind of work that you're doing as well. Like, mm. how can you kind of dive into some of these kind of things that we, the bad habits that we've learned? Yeah. And how do you want to? Because as much as uh, like like um, media and production, it's a way of communicating a message as well. True. True. And you and sometimes like that can really elevate a lot of people. <laughs> Kind of. No, I, I think yeah, we we um, we sometimes try to make our stories resolve, but truth be told, art is not something you force. Um, it's not like every story has to start sounding very very therapeutic, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but we do the best we can to help people um, find things that they need to unlearn. But unlearning, regardless of the movie you watch, should be a personal journey. Mm. And I think every adult who is doing life and on any level should find what they are. Improving or learning, learn, on learning and what they're learning. Yeah. Um, I, I, therapy is important if you can afford it. But I mean, I'm still on learning certain things, right? Um, I am. I internalize. I'm not. The, I'm not very. I'm passive aggressive, right? So that, what that means, I, I probably I'm not very confrontational. Mm. So if you do something that that I'm not, I don't like. I might not tell you then. I'll just process it like, well, I don't know what this is. Then the next day it blows up. Oh, are you wow, thinking yeah. how do we go you, from you zero to hundred, right? And and so I'm now learning to have conversations, but it is difficult. Like I'm having because sometimes my expectation is that you did what you should know you wasn't wrong. You should know he's wrong. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, but my assumption know. that yeah, you should know. And yeah. I, honestly, and I'm learning now that they don't know. Sometimes yeah. they some people yeah. are just they are they, not trying to hurt you. They're just insensitive. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. maybe their threshold of sensitivity. And where they were raised, sensitivity so was a low bar. It yeah. wasn't on the radar. Yeah. So they're not raised to say, you can't say that, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be that tone, right? Learning how to have those conversations is something that we all have to wrestle mm. to come to better versions of ourselves, right? And I think that's what adulting is. Adulting will remain as calm if somebody is responsible for fixing you. But so long as you're committed to becoming a better version of yourself, you're, you have a functional adulthood. Mm. That'll be more enjo- en- enjoyable for the people around you. Yeah, it's, right? it's, so. it's good. I mean, look, <laughs> there's a huge, first of all, this address is a huge sugar daddy culture in Lagos, right? <laughs> and, and, and me, I'm always on the, you know, I'm on the Facebook side. I don't even look that area. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me but, you on but this you know, what I want to know is that as a married man, how do you stay like focused in this place? This city is crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I think again, um, fidelity is a personal choice. A personal choice. Yeah, it's not something just to say. Hmm. It's a personal choice. <laughs> you have to you have to know that okay, I'm, 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 this is who I am. I don't want to be that. <laughs> and I hold spirituality close to my heart. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, so I'm not Instagram, perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'm not perfect on it. To, like, so God me, is I'm, guiding you. I'm doing my best. <laughs> well, again, I wouldn't. I, 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 to say that there are men who have overcome lust would be a fatal lie. I think you just only learn to. Um, the good book will say flee. Flee, flee run from, away. Flee, yeah, flee from it. I would say this is about learning to just sort of walk in wisdom. Mm. Try not to put yourself in vulnerable position. If I notice a growing affection towards a lady that is not my wife, I will know when that affection is growing. I'm, you, I'm self aware enough to know that this is the journey. And you run. As much as I can, right? So, <laughs> so the, the point again is that it's a conversation, and, and sometimes, right? Um, my, um, I'm a little bit of a my my family life, everything's out there. So even when people are close to me, they already know that. Mm-hmm. Right? Come to her as a woman. Yeah, and so yeah. sometimes those 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 boundaries, and I've been fortunate enough to have people uh, kind enough to respect the boundaries too. Mm. So it's on both that's, sides. That's good. That, that's what I want to do. If I'm if I'm giving someone, I'm putting it out there. Nobody yeah. come close. You've been it's doing out that there. Already. It's important actually. <laughs> <laughs> this one is mad. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, it's women too. You know, you spoke about lust, but sometimes women have to deal with lust. I just think it's tough. Do like, women have lust? 
Oh, loss is lovely. It's, it's both ways. That can be a battle for women, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it can. I, I, I think, again, I agree with you. It's a human experience. Actually. Yeah, I think it's spirituality is the only thing that can help. But, but you know what? One, one thing, um, I think that, quite frankly, if somebody is attracted to you and someone is genuinely attracted to you, it's a good thing. And they shouldn't be punished for that. No, they shouldn't be punished, no, for, no, that. Yeah, they shouldn't be punished for that. Mm -mm. No, the point again is that if someone is say because um, you are designed to be, you are beautiful, you are designed for that. Mm. But the point again is that that they want to act on it, it might be the problem. Yeah. Right. And when the boundaries are like, no, no, I'm Frost, not into this yeah. thing, then they have to respect those boundaries. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know that to punish someone because. Um, they are interested in you is a good is a good thing. I used to be so when I first came I was like that I used to get very angry especially mm. when mm. it was like someone that was like a lot older than me so I don't like old men I don't onto, have, onto, I don't have onto, that issue until they send the money through good money right no <laughs> so they send the money through good money exactly <laughs> send your sugar daddy sugar daddy send your money through good money but like now I've calmed down a bit and if anything I'm not saying I flirt back but mm. I just kind of just accept it brush it over and I'm just mm. firm you know yeah. especially if the person's married I'll just be very firm because I find it like an insult yeah, for a married man to like make advances at me. I find it quite insulting. It, it, yeah. It's great. And I, I want to talk about uh, church quickly. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I know. I'm, look, I'm trying to find a good church. All right, Vegas, all right, right, all right. And, right. And, and and don't let this guy form for you. No, 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 but, 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 no, but look, look, look at this. Though, look at this though. So, yeah. so my my take on this is this, right? So. In other countries I've been to, when I find a church is just very relaxed. You come in, they welcome you, and everything's good. But. For some reason, churches in Lagos are a little bit different. It's very cash grab. It's like, come in, be the big guy in front of the seats, ego driven, a lot mm. more, more money involved. Like, how do you how do you guys like navigate that that area of, in this, hmm. this town? So, um, well, this is coming from someone who uh, got to that point where I was a little over, felt everything was overdone. Mm. Um, but I would say in Lagos there are good churches. There are good churches. Yeah, there are good okay. churches. If you're careful enough, you just have to know what you're looking out for. Mm. There are ones that, um, for me, I was in intentional about um, finding a church that caters to love and um, was able to create a safe space where people would unravel and grow. Mm. And it wasn't going to be too much, just the word and good music. And everybody's don't make it too extra. It's not about building one citadel or building one cathedral. Mm, it's you, really you about the, it was a soft yeah. component, relational, very relational. Mm. And I couldn't find that for some time. I became part of a group that created one. Oh really? Yes. So you created a church. Yes. So you have a church right now. <laughs> when you say created church, it sounds funny. But because <laughs> the, the typical word would have been you got called, right? Oh, okay. But quite frankly, <laughs> In, in the way that my life, my mind works, I wasn't trying to get called. Okay. I just wasn't going to church, and I had a couple of friends who were not going to, and we thought, let's have coffee and conversation. So we meet on, the, just what we're doing, mm. we meet on a Sunday morning, worship, and talk about stuff, what your issues were, and it kept growing. We'll meet again and meet again. And after like a year, it had become something. We wow, were our own community. Beautiful. Yeah. We, it wasn't, at the time, we're not even registered. Mm. But as we're growing, um, we needed to structure. People wanted, we needed a space, wanted to get some musical instruments, wanted to get stuff. We now started to build that the, up. Yeah. yeah, it's called the tribe, the tribe Lagos or the tribe nation, right? Nice. Yeah, and and it, it's still fundamental. Not and it, I don't see the church as a building. I see it as a community of people. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so yeah. and we have a communal approach to how it's mm. done, right? And that communal relational aspect helps to not see people as um, on the balance sheet as okay. There is a goal to ob obtain. The goal is people. Right, because God loves people. God is into people. God's business is people. Right, like that's the way I see it. For, for, for me, if I if I go to any church and and, and there's somebody on the pedestal, yeah, that's really not. No, a the pedestalization. <laughs> I personally feel like the pedestalization of. Of, of of the man of God in itself is an is a misplaced one. It's a misplaced right? one. I personally feel like the church was meant to awaken everyone to their divinity. It wasn't about situating the divinity within one person. Everybody has to worship and make that person the mm. God on earth. It was that we all are meant to awaken to the idea, okay, spirituality is not is a nature we all have. And God is yeah. personal yet we all you know so the idea is not to think that man is holy and I'm not the idea is that he's an invitation for me to be. So the way Jesus lived was like, I love, you now love, mm -hmm. right? He was an invitation to become. It wasn't an invitation to uh, you know, keep it, um, worship me and everybody else stay out of it. No, it was like, in beholding him, you're becoming like. So Christianity has to be transformative. The best, the, the transformation is that your relationship and your intimacy with God and with others transform you to becoming more love. Christianity will test you. You meet the unlovables. You meet people that are difficult. You don't stop there. Hmm. You don't give up on people, hmm. right? Because the idea again is that we are all work in progress, right? But you meet but, messy but people. But it's it's more a rehab. You got to cut that. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta cut it off. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, you're right because at, at some point in your life you might not be able to handle community in the yeah. way that it comes. But I think that there are an important aspect of transformation where community becomes a catalyst. But when you're there, when it's time, you will know. So, mm. so if you have someone who's incredibly toxic, right? Mm. Be, uh, verbally abusive, you know, it's maybe spiritually even mm. is trying to attack you. You have, you have evidence that they've been trying to attack you in the spiritual realm. Do you still love that person? From afar. From afar. Okay. I, I mean, loving them from afar means that don't wish them evil, but keep them away from you as much as you can. And it's, it's not like, um, because again, while you are willing to love them, you're not sure that they are not unwilling to they are not willing to they, are, they will not want to harm you exactly so the wisdom there is you know it's about protecting yourself because they are already a victim of their thinking process they are already hijacked by that notion that you are somebody to to harm mm -hmm. right and so um, but i still don't want you to live in that sense of consciousness of fear like someone is out there to harm me right but the idea is that as much as possible do be wise around how you navigate things with them but don't be conscious that someone is out to harm you give love put love into the world love will come back and and do you think that when you put yourself in this whole um spiritual leader uh like persona or not persona but you know what i mean do you think you get more attacks do you think like the devil tries to get you um, more, the more i think i think the, I, I think that notion of the devil attacking is not an exclusive right for the also spiritual people i think every day our greatest, the, the enemy um, of man is the thoughts in the man's mind. When we when we meditate on negative things and we entertain possibilities of fear, we are giving that devil the energy and the power to overcome us. Mm. So um, there was this thing that, that the scripture that says something about, think about lovely thoughts, good mm. thoughts. Like, I think our war is more of the battle of thoughts than it's of... So the point again, if I keep it... If I, I've done this thought experiment. Mm. If, I, if, I, if I walk you through how to retain the thoughts of purity, love about yourself, you have less bad dreams. Really? Yeah, you have less bad dreams. And so you, no, you've done the experiment. Yes, no, that works all the time. So it, there are people that will tell me, oh, I was an experiencing person. They were pressing me at night. Really? Right? And, and they're pressing me in this country. Yes, they're pressing me at night. But my point again is that, do you know, sometimes they get so fixated on village people syndrome. Oh, something is coming. Syndrome, yeah, and yeah. then the truth is that you, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. And you don't know, maybe you're just way mm. too conscious of saying, now what about when you turn your, your attention? If you are thinking of changing a car, you want to go for a Range Rover, mm. you'd be so surprised. The moment you say Range Rover, you will find many you Range see, Rovers. You will see more the range human yeah. mind is designed that way. It's an yeah. attraction. It will pull to your mind that which you're conscious of. And if you go and search for anything on Google today, they will track you with all those things. That's how the mind works. The entire world is a web mm. of information. I, I believe that a lot. That manifestation, like putting things out there, even when you kind of say certain things, you can see more of it. Let's say you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sorry, about, I'm not taking away the fact there are cases where people need to go for the I was going to say. I'm not taking that away, but I do think that if you are being delivered one time too many, maybe the problem is not the deliverance. <laughs> the problem is the thought that you need deliverance. I think that one is enough, right? So having this instance that I know people who have gone for twelve deliverance. Somebody was telling us one day, a pastor saw and said, "You've been coming here too much." The next person, <laughs> I was like, "She told God this. My problem is too much." Now a pastor has bounced me. You understand? And then they become pray, right? They, they, they pray on them, and somebody will tell them, "Bring one thousand dollars up fast for you and pray for you, and oh, I'll wow. kill the spiritual husband." Okay, and the, the man is enjoying. One thousand eating chicken and saying spiritual husband is <laughs> and your spiritual husband is being killed for you. But what about if you help her believe that there's nothing like that? that? No, the point again is that your thought is giving birth to your reality. Yeah. If you believe indeed that this spiritual husband has conquered you, the, the greatest deliverance is the renewal of the mind. And that's what a scripture says, Romans 12, too, that if you renew your mind, you are going to come out of that. So as a 21st century pastor, you must be an expert of the mind as you have the spiritual concept, right? Mm -hmm. If you keep praying and never quite renewing the mind, you're stuck. People are actually living out a pattern they're not living a life they're just repeating circles and circles right so i think that we need an empowering church that can point people to the fact that power is possible you can live an elevated life where you're not being subdued by things but that is your choice by letting your mind and your feelings align mm. you don't experience things to feel them you choose to just you just maintain that feeling if you stay okay there's a word we call in in, in, in spanish called amofate amofate yeah, yeah something yeah, like yeah. that when you believe the world is good you experience good mm. something like that the point again is that it's a thought experiment put it out there 
right? When when somebody cuts you off on traffic, don't say your papa. You understand? No, sometimes <laughs> like, I, I know. Yeah, it makes you feel good. Do you know what about <laughs> you? Stay? Oh, I don't know why he's rushing. Maybe there's something that is important. He has success. Drive. Yeah, you're on another go level, speed. boy. Yeah. Yo, I've got a long time to get to that level. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the point again is that that level is a decision as much as mm. is. Uh, once you decide, like I want, um, I owe nothing. I, I owe no one anything but love. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, you'll be so surprised. That works magic. In fact, the greatest prayer you can ever pray is the choice to love regardless. Mm. So before we go, we always have this. I always have the final question. Yes, we might have some after, but if you were the president of Nigeria, mm -hmm. what would you do differently? Hmm. If I'm the president of Nigeria, I think I would really want a mindset shift. So I would go cultural mapping. I feel like we have an architectural problem that allows 80% of Nigerians to be living in land helplessness. I call it land helplessness or land Facts. powerlessness, where we are disempowered. We are depending on NGO, government, community leader, oil companies to fix all the problems that we have. The human mind has more potential than we've already explored. What about helping people? So I think for me, I would want to begin with the mindset shift, right? I'm very intentional about young people. I will also now try to see how to make our education not just one that can empower them to live a life that is transformative, but also skilled, right? Um, I personally feel like with the population we have, our curriculum is outdated. And if you cannot get that right, we're talking about 13.5 million Nigerian kids not in education. That is terrible, mm -hmm. right? And that numbers are growing. What about if we transform that educational space, put the skills in the school? I feel the curriculum already is already outdated. Most mm. students are graduating outdated. You like, know, you know, I, I'll agree with you. Yesterday, I, I was spoken to a friend of mine who's a teacher at our school. She was marking essays of 68 students mm. written on paper. When last did you write an essay on the paper? <laughs> when last did you write an essay on the paper? No, but you can write essays on paper. No, but it, it, it doesn't really issue, apply in this day and age. What scares me more is 68. The fact that she's marking 68 yeah. is more worrying than the So the quality of attention... Yeah, that's my worry. Yeah. The, the ratio of teacher to student in Nigeria is crazy. The way we have the ratio of police to, to citizens, right? So that there's a lot there. But I do think that if you can get as many people to... Um, have to, to live from a place of power, mm -hmm. not from a place of help and um, disempower places. Mm. We are going to see more transformation. Entrepreneurship in Nigeria today, we just have, FinTech has been one space where I find a lot of young Nigerians interested in solving problems. That's where all the FDI goes to, right? Mm. Yeah. But we've had about three unicorns coming out of that space and maybe a few more will come. But that's, that is an area where young people are solving irrespective or in spite of government support. Mm. When people are waking, the country changes. So it's not about getting one president. We get to fix it. We think the president will fix all our issues. Yeah. No. Take out whoever is there, put the next person. It's only Same just a fraction. Yeah. Right? What transforms the country is uh, Americans today, some five percent of their jobs are are, are by the smaller SMEs, right? Small and medium scale enterprises. So the smaller guys are creating, they're driving the economy, right? So we need more, what they call enabling environment. I find yeah. that word too sad because everybody has used it, mm. enabling environment. I'm but we need to create on, yeah. enabling and empowering policies mm -hmm. that can get startups to access capital, move the roadblocks, right? So that they can be able to thrive. So all of these are, these are the things that I think is required. And I think not the renewal of the mind is not just something we'll do in education. Even the churches need to renew all of the minds. Oh, God, even the way we parent, even the way we parent, parent even yeah, in the yeah. way we go to work and the way we work. Right? Most Nigerian workplaces have become toxic places that they are. God, and they are meant to be. So I think that there is this conversation is multi layered, yeah, and it needs to happen across board. But ultimately, when a man awakens, mm. the world awakens. Too. But what is one that. thing you would do that you would just? What's the one simple thing that you would change if you were the president of Nigeria? The constitution. You change the constitution. Yeah, I, I, I really more. feel like the constitution has somehow remained locked us into formation that is not letting us to. Tr pro I believe in regional, uh, regionalizing things so mm. that at every point in time effectiveness can be measured because the the southeast is different from configuration from the southwest mm. and from the north central. And so if yeah. you go regional, you allow the the, the the centers of excellence to be domiciled within that, and they have their cultural peculiarities that can allow for them to thrive. So I I I I'd hope for a referendum at some point when. I Nigerians can actually decide how this power can be shared because the presidency is just one aspect. Mm. The local government is just as important. And in fact, in part, the common man more. more the state government is yeah. also important, yeah. right? So that these are these are so the constitution. Complex. No, mm. Freddie.
nice to meet you. you. Thank really you good, so really much. Really good chat. I've learned a lot. Literally. S. I've learned a lot. S. He said S. S. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> right so up. thank you. We'll definitely have you on soon. Definitely. Guys, check out. Tell yeah. us where to check you out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Social media. I think I'm active on all platforms. Freddie Adimefe. Uh, Freddie Adimefe. That's it. F E R O D Y A D I M E F E. And you're, are you complaining? And Magic. Uh, Magic Apex Studios and Imaginarium. I have two actually. Okay. Imaginarium is a creative tech company. Mm-hmm. So um, we started building products when we started and um, hoping to do yeah. that and enjoy building. And check out the tribe too. Yeah, the tribe. The tribe. <laughs> like, you should check out the tribe. Yeah, yeah. Patrick. No, no. Like, I, 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 listen. Again, it's a just, little... Just make sure there's, there's some... You see? You see? 